Hey everyone, Gaijin Goomba here. So yeah, Nintendo sent me a copy of Yokai Watch to talk about here on my channel, and wow is there a lot I want to say about this game, both culturally and mechanically. But before I get too in-depth though, yes, I know my capture is garbage. It's not that I couldn't afford to or too lazy to get a capture device, it's just it wouldn't get shipped out to me for six months, so I'm working with what I can. Besides, I like to think I did pretty good for using a camera, two chopsticks, three bottles of paint, and some tape. Anyway. There's a lot to be enjoyed here for any age. While the game is presented in a cartoonish manner, there's a lot of underlying humor and context this game throws out. I kid you not, the game made a government bailout joke at one point. The game also never talks down to you either. Even though you're playing as a kid, the game never treats you like one. It's got that sweet spot in its dialogue that Pokemon managed. And speaking of, to answer the question, is this game a Pokemon clone? No, it is not. Where Pokemon is very calculated and controlled, Yokai Watch is a bit more chaotic. While you don't control your yokai in combat one-to-one, -one, I think there's even more involvement than Pokemon had. Battles consist of all six of your yokai that are traveling with you, with three fighting in the front and the other three on the back, and all of them on a big wheel. You instantly switch them out by turning said wheel. From this screen, you also have the option of using items, purifying yokai if they get debuffed, pin a particular enemy or boss body part to have your yokai focus on, and to activate your yokai super move, which is initiated by some sort of stylus action. Overall, I find the combat to be really challenging and rewarding, as it actually makes you think on your feet instead of turn-based combat. Finally, the game world is huge, and I mean really huge. But unlike most console RPGs, you actually can explore a majority of the map before completing your first quests. Oh right, I forgot to mention, this game has actual quests. While they typically aren't massive in scale, the quests involve you helping other people's real-life problems using your yokai buddies to help them out. And that's another thing I really like about this game, just how real-world it is while staying fantastical. It's a lot like how the real world is perceived in a Miyazaki film. Relatable in the aspects we know, but the fantastical is just as believable enough in conjunction with that of the real world. So in light of that flowery description, let me get to the culture of this game, and wow, this is an aspect of the game that really shines. First of all, I have to mention that the game world in the US localization is called Springdale, which ironically is a real town not 10 minutes from where I live. Aside from that little anecdote, the game is just... it's Japan. And not in a moe moe kawaii anime way either. When I first walked around the game world, all I could think of was, yep, that's, uh, that's Japan. The architecture, the roadways, even the inside of stores are spot on to the real life counterparts. And it was insanely nostalgic for me. The design of the yokai are both charming and accurate. So many of these monsters, I was like, yep, I know what that's supposed to be. And that, and that. It fascinated me, really. To anyone who's even remotely interested in Japanese monsters, this game is for you. Level 5 really went out of their way to give an accurate, if not a little overly adorable design to creatures that represent so much of their culture. I honestly wish I could describe it more, but I feel like if I did, I would end up ruining some of the best parts of this game. Long story short, if you even moderately like Japan, you will love this game, because it shows you exactly what Japan is. Even if you don't like Japan, the writing, the characters, and the really involved combat will pull you in. I only have two minor gripes about this game, though. The first one is, the way you recruit yokai feels a little too random. Each one has a favorite food which you can give them in order to make them like you more after you fight them. However, there's still that chance that they won't join you after combat. Maybe I'm giving them the wrong food, or maybe combat has to be done a certain way. Either way, it's a little grindy to recruit specific yokai. But what helps is both the really involved combat, and the fact that aside from a few areas of the game, you can actually choose which yokai you initiate combat with. The only other problem I have about the game is I worry a few plot points are going to trigger people. Without going into too much detail, the game uses divorce as a minor plot point. Twice. Sadly, divorce in Japan is nothing new. And fragmented relationships are actually rising there. But here in the US? I can see a lot of parents and kids getting really upset at the sometimes heavy topics discussed in what mainly people perceive to be a child-friendly game. But that's the other thing about this game. When I said it dealt with real life, it deals with real life. The good and the bad. And in a way, I have a lot of respect for it because of that. I just worry about a few people getting offended by it. Aside from that though, I really, really like this game. It's been a while since I found an RPG that didn't bore me with story or combat, but this one does a really good job at both because of how close to home to the real world it hits. And there's just so much culture to it. I'm really debating starting a side project show to describe the cultural influences behind each and every one of the game's monsters. If you like RPGs, Japanese culture, or monster collecting, you will like this game. But thanks for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this vid, click this little eye right here and you can check out some of my other works. But also keep an eye out on the Game Theorist channel. I've got a really fun episode of Culture Shock coming out talking about the flagship monster of Yokai Watch, Chibanyan, and how he may not be as cute and innocent as people may think. But until next time, everyone, this is Gaijin Goomba signing out.